circumstances do we get those kinds of concentrations such as the molybdenum? Well, let's go back to that diagram again which shows the last material to crystallize in an igneous intrusion. The last magma to crystallize, in other words, the last silicate piece of the silicate rock melt is this part, rich in light colored minerals, rich also in dissolved molybdenum sulfide, for example. And it's in this kind of stage of an igneous intrusion that concentrations in pegmatites occur, in molybdenum. Now, before we leave igneous intrusions, there's a kind of a secondary means of concentrating minerals that igneous intrusions are responsible for, and that is their effect on the surrounding rock. Let's look at this vein again. If sulfur from the vein moves out into a rock which is rich in some iron, for example, uh, shales are quite often rich in iron clay minerals, then the iron in the, in the rock and the sulfur from the vein can get together to form pyrite, iron sulfide. The effect then of material in veins and in igneous intrusions on the country rock, the surrounding rock, is a means of producing concentrations. This very often happens in limestones, as we've shown on this last diagram here. Here the igneous intrusion, material moving from the igneous intrusion, affecting the limestone, and producing this concentration very often of copper sulfide. So those are the means of producing concentrations that are associated with igneous intrusions. One of the principal results and one of the most oh, romantic results of uh, igneous intrusions are concentrations of gold. And one of the areas where gold is most prolific is in the Northwest Territories in the region of Yellowknife. The ore body occurs in a fault zone which cuts Archean greenstone bolt volcanic rocks in the Yellowknife area and was discovered by diamond drilling in 1944. And since then, about seven and a half million tons of ore have been mined at Giant Yellowknife, averaging about seven tenths of an ounce per ton. The ore is hoisted to the surface from about 2,100 feet at the rate of about 1,100 tons a day. That's about seven or 800 ounces of gold, and then goes through the crushing and flotation process, which is common for most metallic ores. It's especially important that it be an efficient process when one's dealing with such low concentrations of metal as seven-tenths of an ounce per ton. After the cyanide process, which succeeds the crushing, the ore arrives here in the form of the precipitate from the cyanide process and here the ore is finally refined and turned into the gold bricks that we would all like to have at home. The first stage is to put the precipitate into small furnaces and when it's molten to draw off the slag or most of the slag. It's impossible to perfectly separate the slag which is formed by the fluxes that are mixed with the precipitate from the cyanide process, but most of it can be removed in this fashion. The observer is carefully observing just how much he can take off before he begins to take too much gold. Small samples are taken in order to ensure that the slag is really slag and doesn't contain too much gold. But even so, the slag is itself used again in order to get every last piece of the precious metal out. Once most of the slag has been removed, the remaining highly concentrated in gold liquid is poured into molds. Most of the material which is, is spilling over here, in fact, is still slag. And what remains in the mold is mostly the, the gold. The bricks must then be cooled And eventually that dark 
slag on the top will have to be cleaned off. Each of those bricks weighs about 50 pounds and is worth about 80 or 90 thousand dollars depending on the price of gold. And about 250 million dollars worth of gold have been produced in the Yellowknife area since gold was first discovered there in the 30s. Sudden cooling and contraction of the metal releases the gold brick from the mold. And then the next stage is to clean off the remnants of slag which still lie on the surface of the brick. And this cleaning then leaves a block of pure gold, which is then identified by stamping before it's sent to the mint in Ottawa. It isn't too difficult to understand the local conditions under which the gold at Yellowknife originated. The gold is a vein deposit and originated when hot steamy solutions moved into a system of fractures in the fault zone and then the steamy solution cooled in the way that we discussed for the origin of veins. But there seems to be a much broader context in which we can look at ore deposits. For example, in the last unit, you'll remember that the ore deposits of the Canadian Shield are dominantly found in the greenstone bolts rather than in the massive granite which surrounds the greenstone bolts. If we move into younger geological terrain, out of the shields into the mountain belts, for example, that lie around the shields of the world, then we find that there's a different kind of relationship. It seems that most sulfide deposits, and sulfides are the dominant ore minerals, are associated either with present day or with past subduction zones. But remember that the subduction zones are only the last stage in the recycling of the oceanic crust. So if we're to understand why the ore deposits are associated with subduction zones, we probably ought to go back to the beginning of the story of the rock which is recycled in the subduction zones. We have to go back to the spreading ridges. And in the spreading ridges, remember, molten magma is ascending from the asthenosphere and they're crystallizing. And it seems that together with the molten magma, fluids, hot steamy fluids, rich in dissolved ore minerals, are also crystallizing. For example, in the Red Sea, it's known that perhaps 1.3, 1.4% of copper is present in the sediments on the, or in the top 60 feet of the sediment of the Red Sea something in the order of 4.5% of zinc and about 30% of iron. So it seems that the, uh, the ores which we find at old subduction zones perhaps had their origin at the spreading ridges. And in the subduction zones is where that material was recycled. Recycled because as the down moving plate descended deeper, it got hotter and it melted and the material in the plate, which had originated at the spreading ridge, complete with concentrations of copper and iron and zinc and so forth, there was recycled and ascended into the, um, <clears throat> the volcanoes above the subduction zones. 